Hey guys, today I wanted to try something that's been requested for quite a few weeks now, making a trebuchet. Now, trebuchets are simple, but they're very difficult to make well. Alright, and the first thing to do is try to find a level. But nothing in the main campaign was really standing out to me. Everything was too close together and there wasn't good attachment points, so I just decided making my own custom level would probably be the best way to go. And actually, this is the first time I've ever doing this. So you see there I was separating the islands a decent amount, and now I'm making that strong base for the trebuchet. I'm using these platforms sort of as a way for the car to sit on, and also for the trebuchet to attach to. I'm separating the islands 150 meters apart. Now actually I'm going to extend this later to 250, but for now, just for testing purposes, this was probably the best way to go. Alright, so now I'm designing the cradle for the car to sit in. This is what's actually going to carry the car until, well, it doesn't, and it flings the car forward. There I'm making an arm for the counterweight to sit on, and I'm making a counterweight out of roads here. The trebuchet is powered by the counterweight falling. This moves the other side of the arm up, which flings the car over. So here I have a decent amount of weight attached, so I decided to go for that. So now what I'm doing is moving the car to the other side of the platform. And this might seem strange, but it's actually for a really good reason. The arm isn't going to directly attach to the cradle. There's going to be a sling that attaches to the arm, and that's going to attach to the cradle. And this gives me additional speed, and overall it's just better for a trebuchet. But here you see how the arm is working. So as the counterweight drops, the arm pivots up, which is exactly what I want. Now I'm just improving the counterweight, I realized I could make it smaller and way more. You see it weighs so much it just breaks the arm. But overall that's solid. So next thing to do is improve the cradle and get it ready to put the sling onto. I'm going to redesign this cradle a lot of times just because it's one of those things that it takes a while to get perfect. Those cables are what makes up the sling, and you can see here how it pulls up and breaks. Well the arm isn't strong enough, I guess this shouldn't really surprise me though because Honestly, it's not a lot of steel for the amount of road that's there, and the road is very heavy. Now I'm decreasing the car's speed, acceleration, horsepower, and braking. This is basically just to make it glide right across the ground and do not argue at all with what the trebuchet is asking it to do. So after just some general improvements to the stability of the arm, you can see what I get here. And the reason it smashes into the mountain is that it's not moving up fast enough to carry the weight of the cradle. Really, it's just not strong enough. So I incorrectly addressed the problem here and decided to increase the strength of the cradle. The solution to this was actually to increase the weight of the counterweight. That's a funny sentence. So what this is going to do is rotate it faster since there's more mass at the ends, but it's not even strong enough to carry itself at this point. The counterweight just falls off. So I need to add more steel to attach it better to the point where well, it's supposed to be attached to. But now the arm isn't strong enough. You see how this constant back and forth between just increasing different things. But Eventually, I increase the strength of the arm enough, just by adding more steel and decreasing the mass of the car, which it bounced weird. You can see hat here how it just bounces against the platform. But I could fix this, and the decreased weight of the car makes it easier for the trebuchet to fling the car over. You can see how it's almost overcoming the mountain now. So the next thing to try was just moving up the cradle a bit. So you see I'm attaching it closer to the rotational point. I also redesigned it a bit to be a bit stronger. And this misses the mountain, and it got way farther than I thought it was going to. Next thing to do was figure out a way to disengage the one cable. The idea is when it gets to the top, it should one of the cables should break off, and the sling should allow the car to fly forward instead of holding on to it. And I'm trying some stuff with hydraulics, maybe breaking steel, but this just kept not working. Really, because it was incredibly difficult to time, even if it was possible, I'm still not sure. I ended up switching to this, which is a split joint. The idea of the split joint, you can see it just breaks apart right at the start of the level. Now that's not awesome, but I could put a time delay on it so it breaks exactly when I want it to. Here, after three seconds, the split joint should break apart. So you see initially it's attached, it's like any other node. But right as it gets to the top, it breaks off. And this is perfect. I mean, that was a little late, but the idea is perfect. That's exactly what I need it to do. So after setting it a bit better, you can see I get to this sort of swing. and it breaks off. The cradle's holding on a bit too much, so I need to redesign that, but overall it's pretty good. And the next thing I wanted to do is move out, well, make another platform, move out the car on, on top of it. And the reason is that the sling, I was reading up online, the sling should be about the same length as the arm that's pulling it. So you see here, they're roughly the same length. So this should get me a better launch. Also, I'm moving out the counterweight a bit more because I read the counterweight, uh, the length between the rotational point and the counterweight should be a third as long as the distance between the rotational point and the arm. This kept snapping, and it was kind of irritating me, so I turned on Unbrankable temporarily, just to get it to see if it could work. I also increased the mass of the um, counterweight to see what kind of launch I could get. And wow, did I get a good launch. I was amazed at how quickly I got this to work. Like, genuinely, I was just messing around with a couple things. 
So the next thing to do was increase the mass of the counterweight even more, but also increase the mass of the car, just so it felt a bit more fair. It kind of felt lame to do a 0.1 mass car. So now I think it's like three and a half um, polygrams. All right, and here I'm expanding the level from 150 meters to 250. Once I realized how far this thing was flying, it just seemed natural to make it go to the max. But you see the launch I get here, and, well... It hits. <laughs> so that's my first working thing. So the next thing I wanted to do is just get rid of all of the steel. Now I'm keeping all the positions of things, you see how the cables attach to the same point and the counterweights in the same spot. But I wanted a better arm design. And really that's for two reasons. The first one is that it kind of weighs a lot more to have a bunch of extra steel I don't need. And the second one is it, well, it looked really ugly. And especially with unbreaking on, there was just no reason for it to look ugly. So I'm fixing that up here. You see it's a, just a straight design and everything's attaching to that rotational point in the same way. And I'm also improving the cradle just so that it's um, two roads with two ropes attached to it. But it actually had this fun problem with the car just like to go straight through it. Because, you know, that makes sense. So after adding a, ro I mean, a piece of wood here to just overall improve the design, you see what kind of launch I get. Alright, you see it launches and it flings it super far, and the trebuchet is still really inefficient. You see how much it's swinging back and forth. But it doesn't matter, because it's just so strong, that car got flung way above the island. At this point, I turned off Unbreakable, because I figured I could do it with braking on, because I had so much headroom at this point to just strengthen things. First thing to fix was the counterweight falling off. Now I could just do this with, well, even one steel piece. This somehow just fixed it. But you see, everything just sort of like to separate. So it's just some perpendicular supports to the arm. Now I'm adding in some, well, another layer of supports too, because it ended up literally just not being strong enough. But with these changes, it was actually looking pretty good. Right until it decided to do this. Now, as the trebuchet, I mean the counterweight swings, it liked to break itself off, and I decided to connect it. I got a little bit carried away there, and I did an under support too, just to keep everything attached. But now it actually doesn't break, which was good. And it flung the car and everything. And you can see the distance I got on this. It's just short of where it needs to be. So the next thing to do was just strengthen up the counterweight a bit more, added a bit more counterweight. And after just making a few more minor adjustments, you can see how finicky this thing is. It just likes to kind of explode. But after making just a few more, adding a few more pieces of road into the counterweight, just a few more things, you see this launch. Which got the car over. Bounces on the land, hits the checkpoint, and that is it. I also wanted to say thanks to my patrons, they got to watch this video a little bit early, and in the future, I'm working to get videos out three to five days early. So if you want to support me there for three dollars, you can get early content. Man, I could not believe I got that to work as well as it did. In the future, I might have to expand it. If they ever expand how big you can make a workshop level, I just put it at the max. I mean, if I can get a kilometer out of this thing, that would be insane. But everyone, thanks for watching. If you liked the video, like the video, it'll make the trebuchet feel good about itself. Uh, make sure to subscribe for more Polybridge 2 content. And if you have any questions or comments, feel free to ask them below. Until next time.